Today we will see a small topic that is disseminated intravascular coagulation. Disseminated intravascular coagulation or otherwise it is known as consumptive coagulopathy. It is a pathological form of clotting that that is a diffuse and consumes large amount of clotting factors causing widespread external bleeding, internal bleeding or both and clotting. It is never a primary diagnosis. It results from some problem that triggered the clotting cascade either extrinsically by releasing of large amount of tissue thromboplastin or intrinsically by widespread damage to the vascular integrity. Blood clotting normally blood clotting occurs in three stages that is when the tissues damage thromboplastin is released in the presence of calcium the thromboplastin convert prothrombin into thrombin this thrombin convert fibrinogen into fibrin and this fibrin forms long sticky strands which enwrap the blood cells to establish a clot the coagulated material contracts and excludes the serum which is plasma depleted of its clotting factors. This is the final part of coagulation cascade. It is equally important for a healthy person to maintain the blood as a fluid in order that it can circulate freely. The coagulation mechanism is normally held at the bay the presence of heparin which is produced by the liver. Fibrinolysis is the breakdown of fibrin and occurs as a response to presence of clotting blood. Unless fibrinolysis occurs, coagulation will continue. It is by enzyme plasmin which breaks down the fibrin in the clot and produces fibrin degradation products. DIC begins with an event which triggers the widespread clotting with the formation of microthrombi throughout the circulation. DIC triggers fibrinolysis and production of fibrin degradation products. Fibrin degradation products reduce the efficiency of normal clotting. When DIC occurs during or after delivery, the reduced level of clotting factors and the presence of fibrin degradation products prevent normal hemostasis at the placental site. The fibrin degradation products inhibit myometrial action and prevent the uterine muscle from constricting the blood vessels in the normal way and torrential bleeding may the outcome. Visible blood loss may be observed to remain uncoagulated for several minutes and even when clotting does occur, the clot is unstable. Microthrombi may cause circulatory obstructions in the small blood vessels. The effect of this vary from cyanosis of fingers and toes to CVA and failure of organs in the liver and kidney. In obstetrics, DIC is most triggered by the release of large amount of thromboplastin which occurs firstly in the placental abruption, the most common cause of DIC in obstetrics and in retained dead fetus syndrome and anaphylatoid syndrome of pregnancy that is amniotic fluid embolism, then gram-negative sepsis are the examples of conduct that can trigger DIC because the widespread damage to the vascular integrity. Events that trigger DIC are, first one is placental abruption. Due to damage of the tissue at the placental site, large quantities of thromboplastin release into the circulation and cause DIC. If the placenta delivered as soon as possible after the abruption, the risk can be reduced. Second is intrauterine death. If the dead fetus remain in the uterus for 3 to 4 weeks, thromboplastin release from the dead fetus and this enters the maternal circulation and deplete the clotting factors. Then amniotic fluid embolism. If death does not occur due to pulmonary embolism, DIC may develop because there is a large amount of thromboplastin in amniotic fluid. And preeclampsia and Herb syndrome. FDP, the fibrin degradation products are increased in the serum and urine which indicate that fibrinolysis is taking place. In severe pH and HELP syndrome and in gram-negative sepsis can trigger DIC because of the widespread damage to the vascular integrity. 
DIC is an overactivation of clotting cascade and fibrinolytic system, resulting in depletion of platelets and clotting factors, which result in formation of multiple fibrin clots throughout the body's vasculature, even in the microcirculation. DIC triggers fibrinolysis and the production of fibrin degradation product. This FDP will reduce the normal clotting. When DIC occurs after delivery, the decreased clotting factors and presence of FDP prevent normal hemostasis at the placental site. FDP inhibits myometrial action and prevent the uterine muscles from constricting the blood vessels in the normal way, so massive bleeding occurs. Microthrombi will cause obstruction in the small blood vessels. The effect may vary from sinus of fingers and toe to CVA and failure of such organs in the liver and kidney. The clinical manifestations include spontaneous bleeding from the gums, nose, oozing, excessive bleeding from many puncture site, intravenous access site or site of insertion of urinary catheter, petechia for example in the arm where blood pressure cuff was placed, other signs of bruising, hematuria, GI bleeding, tachycardia, diaphoresis. The lab, lab studies shows that Platelets decrease, fibrinogen decrease, factor 5 decrease, factor 8 decrease, prothrombin time decrease, PPT decrease, FDP increase, D-dimer test increase. D-dimer is a specific fibrin degradation fragment. Management. The medical management in all cases involves correction of underlying cause because DIC is never a primary disease, it's always a secondary. So we have to correct the underlying cause, volume replacement, blood component therapy, optimization of oxygenation and perfusion status and continued reassessment of laboratory parameters are usual form of treatment. Vitamin K administration and factor 7 may consider as additional therapies. Nursing intervention include assessment of signs of bleeding and signs of complication from administration of blood products, fluid replacement, cardiac and hemodynamic monitoring and protect the woman from injury. Because acute inner failure is one of the consequences, urinary output has to be closely monitored. Vital signs assess frequently, side lane position to maximize the blood flow to the uterus, oxygen administered to the nose. Non rebreather mask, DAC usually cured with a birth as a coagulation abnormality. Thank you for listening.